In this video, I will discuss ultraviolet visible spectroscopy, also called UV vis spectroscopy. Let's begin by examining these three compounds. These three compounds share one thing in common they are all colored. Contrast this with the compounds at the bottom. All of these compounds are not colored. Why the difference? Can you find a common electronic property shared by the three colored compounds that the three non-colored compounds lack? The answer is all of the colored compounds have molecules with extended pi electron conjugation. The compounds that are not colored, the pi electron conjugation is not as extensive. So for, ex for example, the compound in the middle is synthetic aniline dye. There are p orbitals at every atom in the ring. There's a p orbital at each nitrogen and all of these p orbitals are consecutive, parallel, and overlapping. This permits the pi electrons in this set of p orbitals to delocalize from one ring through the nitrogens to the other ring. The compounds at the bottom, whereas they have three separate benzene rings, the pi electrons are not able to delocalize from one ring to the other. They're pretty much locked into each ring. So the extent of pi electron conjugation in each of these molecules is not as great as it is for the upper molecules. In general, molecules that have extended pi electron conjugation are colored or have the potential to be colored whereas molecules that lack extended pi electron conjugation are not colored. Absorption spectroscopy involves the study of the pattern of light absorption by substances. In UV-vis spectroscopy, light passes through a sample. The instrument will change the wavelength continuously from short to longer wavelengths. It scans the region from 160 all the way up to 750 nanometers. The ultraviolet region is from 160 to 400 nanometers and the visible from 400 to 750 nanometers. And over that whole range the instrument measures regions where light is absorbed. It measures a quantity called light absorbance for each of these absorbing regions. In this graphic, I want to compare the signal observed in the UV vis spectrum with a signal for other spectroscopies. Typically, the signal in a UV vis spectrum is a rather broad absorption peak, much broader than the signals that we saw with infrared spectroscopy and NMR spectroscopy. Now, when a light photon from the UV vis region is absorbed by a molecule, an electron in a lower energy level is promoted to a higher energy level. We refer to this as an electronic transition. Now, generally, an electronic transition involves an electron in the highest occupied molecular orbital, we say HOMO, promoted to the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital. We say LUMO. Let's take a look at an actual UV spectrum for a compound. This is the UV spectrum of 2,5-dimethyl-2,4 hexadiene 
you'll note that the absorption peak is fairly broad, stretching from below 200 nanometers to about 265 nanometers. And we, now, in this peak, we, we note that the, the wavelength where the absorbance is highest is about 241 nanometers. We refer to this as the lambda max. For this compound spectrum, the lambda max is at 241 nanometers. Now, we always reference an absorption peak with respect to that peak's lambda max. Let's now compare the lambda max of compounds with single or, or isolated pi bonds to polyenes with conjugated pi bonds. Uh, for example, we'll take ethene. It has one carbon-carbon double bond. The lambda max for it is observed at 171 nanometers. I'll compare that with the lambda max for a conjugated diene, 1,3-butadiene. The lambda max is 217 nanometers. And you notice then for the conjugated diene, the lambda max is at a higher value. It's a longer wavelength than we see for the alkene with a single double bond. An interesting thing happens when pi electrons become conjugated. Now there are multiple levels in a molecule. The lower levels contain pi electrons and the higher levels are empty. The, the lower levels are bonding and the higher levels are antibonding molecular orbitals. Now with pi electron conjugation, the highest occupied molecular orb orbital, the so-called HOMO, is set at a relatively high energy. Now, while all of the antibonding orbitals lie at energies that are above bonding orbitals, conjugation causes antibonding orbitals to drop somewhat in their energy. As a consequence, when pi electrons are conjugated in a molecule, the gap, the energy gap between the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, the LUMO, and the highest occupied molecular orbital, the HOMO, decreases. With the smaller energy gap, the energy of the photon absorbed is less. Consequently, the wavelength of the light absorbed is greater. There's generally an inverse relationship between the energy of the photon absorbed and the wavelength of the light absorbed. The smaller the energy, the longer the wavelength of the light absorbed. In this diagram, we show the contrast between a molecule whose pi electrons are not conjugated and a molecule whose pi electrons are conjugated. In the molecule whose electrons are not conjugated, there's a fairly large difference in the energy between the HOMO level and the LUMO level. The delta E is a fairly large value. But when the pi electrons are conjugated, the difference in energy between HOMO and LUMO is less. The delta E is less. When the delta E is less, when the gap between HOMO and LUMO is less, the energy of the photon is less, and the wavelength of the light absorbed is longer. All right. Here we show an energy diagram of the molecular orbitals of two molecules.
ethene on the left, one three butadiene on the right. Ethene has just two pi electrons, does not have conjugated pi electrons. One three butadiene has four pi electrons, and those pi electrons are conjugated. Now, ethene, we see the bonding molecular orbital, that is the HOMO, and then the an antibonding molecular orbital, that's the LUMO. The bonding molecular orbital has two pi electrons, and the antibonding orbital is empty. We note that there's a fairly big difference in energy between the HOMO level and the LUMO level. So when light's absorbed, electrons promoted from the lower HOMO level to the higher LUMO level, because the difference in energy is fairly large, the energy the photon absorbed is large, and the wavelength of the light absorbed is fairly short. Now, in contrast to that, we look at the energy diagram for butadiene's molecular orbitals. It has two bonding molecular orbitals and two antibonding molecular orbitals. The four pi electrons will occupy the bonding molecular orbitals. The higher energy antibonding orbitals are empty or unoccupied. You can see in the diagram that the highest occupied molecular orbital is this orbital here, it's called pi 2. It has two pi electrons, a pair of pi electrons. The LUMO, the lowest unoccupied molecular orbital, is the first antibonding orbital. And the thing to note is that, in contrast to ethene, the energy difference between the HOMO and the LUMO is less. The delta E between these two levels is less. So consequently, the energy required to promote an electron from HOMO to LUMO for butadiene is less, and the wavelength of the light absorbed will correspondingly be at a longer wavelength. And another generalization we find is that the longer the chain of pi electron conjugation, the narrower the energy gap between HOMO and LUMO. And consequently, then, a molecule that has a long chain of conjugated pi electrons will therefore tend to absorb at a longer wavelength. Here is a compound that really brings this aspect out dramatically. This uh, molecule is beta-carotene. This is what gives carrots the orange color. Beta-carotene is absorbing in the visible region. Its lambda max, though I don't have the value here, is a fairly large value. It's a long wavelength. The wavelength is sufficiently long that light is absorbed in the visible region. It's no longer the ultraviolet. Now this too, we know that carrots are orange. The color of beta carotene is orange. This means that the light absorbed, the light in the visible region, is actually the complement of orange. The complement of orange is blue. So that beta-carotene absorbing the visible region is absorbing blue light. And what we see is the light not absorbed that reflects back in all directions. And that is orange light. And that's why beta-carotene is orange. Now, note that this molecule has numerous double bonds and conjugation, has a very extended chain of pi electron conjugation. 
consequently, you would expect that the wavelength that it absorbs at is long. And that's because here there's a very narrow energy gap between its HOMO and its LUMO. Generally speaking, for every double bond we add in conjugation with a starting diene, it increases the wavelength of absorption by about 30 nanometers. All right. Here we show the UV absorption spectrum for acetone. There are two peaks. One with a lambda max of 195 nanometers and a second peak with a lambda max at 274 nanometers. And there's an obvious contrast. The peak at 195 has a larger absorbance to bigger peak than the peak at 274, which has a smaller absorbance. Now, UV vis peaks can be larger or smaller. And what that reflects is this. The more photons that are absorbed in a given electronic transition, the larger the absorbance, the larger the corresponding peak. So a large peak means that a relatively great greater number of photons are being absorbed. Now for every electronic transition there is a so-called transition probability. The transition probability is the probability that photons will be absorbed. And this transition probability actually depends on this depends on the difference in polarity between the HOMO and LUMO states. The greater the difference in polarity between those two states, the greater the transition probability. So a transition that has two states with a greater difference in polarity will observe more photons absorbed. Now in the case of the 195, the larger peak, that must mean that the transition here, having more photons absorbed, is a more probable transition. Uh, that is, there's a greater difference in polarity between HOMO and LUMO than the other smaller peak with a smaller absorbance. And let's take a closer look at that. The peak at 195 is due to a transition from an electron in a bonding pi molecular orbital, that's actually the HOMO, being promoted to a pi star, an anti-bonding molecular orbital, that's the LUMO. Now in the case of the 274 absorption, the transition is different. The transition is one of the non-bonding uh, electrons. That is an electron of one of these two lone pairs. They're in so-called non-bonding molecular orbitals being promoted to a pi star orbital. Now it's the same pi star orbital that we saw over on the 195 transition. But the fact that the peak at 274 is so small would mean that there being a less probable transition, fewer photons absorbed, would mean that there is a smaller difference in polarity between the HOMO and LUMO. And so let's let's see if we can understand that. Okay. With respect to the 195 nanometer absorption peak. That's the pi to pi star transition. An electron in the pi orbital, that's the HOMO, is 
approximately halfway between the carbon and the oxygen. It transitions up to the pi star orbital, that's the LUMO. In the excited state, you can see that the electron is on average closer to the oxygen atom. And consequently, the excited state has a larger negative charge on the oxygen than in the initial pi electron state. It's a fairly pronounced change in polarity, fairly large difference in polarity between the pi state and the pi star state. And that correspondingly means that the transition probability is large. Lots of photons get absorbed. Leads to a fairly large peak. But let's contrast that with the 274 peak. The 274 transition, we call that an end pi star transition. One of the lone pair electrons moves from the non-bonding HOMO to the pi star LUMO. And the point is, is that the uh, non-bonding electron starts out right on the oxygen. And when it transitions up to the pi star state, it's still pretty close to the oxygen. It hasn't changed very much. So there's not much difference in the negative charge on the oxygen between the HOMO and the LUMO. Because of the smaller change in polarity, the transition probability is less. Fewer photons will be absorbed. And that causes the, the smaller peak that we observed at 274.